Thanks everyone. Good to see you again in our final session of September. Um, and I guess our first session of officially fall or autumn. So we're in a bit of a transition here and I'm happy to be sharing that transition with all of you. Today, I thought I would introduce one of the foundational practices uh, that we use when training mindfulness and really offering insight into our own sort of reactive habits or patterns. And this is something that we can use in formal practice like we're going to do today and also something that you can use hopefully in daily life. It's just a really um, quite simple but foundational framework for looking at how we feel affected or kind of altered or even triggered by either life events or things going on in our own minds or bodies and managing them in a different way. So sometimes another uh, contemplative teacher friend of mine and I talk about this and something we continually come back to is sometimes it's not the thing that's happening but it's how we're relating to the thing that really has an influence on our um, mental emotional well-being and fortunately the good news about that is that even if we can't necessarily shift a fundamental um, sensation or thing that's happening in our life we can often shift the way we're relating to it. Um, as an example, uh, just a really basic example, one way that our bodies and minds, our body minds typically react to something that we perceive as a threat, like um, a challenging email from a boss or a coworker, or even like a physical pain in the body, the default reaction is often to contract. It's like protection, right? Um, and what's happening in, in our systems during those times is actually a release of stress hormones. Uh, so hormones releasing into the blood to help us fight or flight. It's the sympathetic nervous system response. If you're familiar with that terminology, the preparation for us to either fight the thing or flee. Um, the thing is, <laughs> oftentimes in the, our daily lives, we have that response when it's not actually going to serve our best interest. So we have a like high stress response when actually what we need is to feel a little more regulated, a little more relaxed, to have our, our higher sort of thinking, our cognitive capacity fully online to be creative, to problem solve. And that's hard to do when we're in that contracted um, fight or flight mode. Uh, so one example of how we can shift how we're relating or reacting to something in order to actually facilitate a better outcome, whether that means feeling less stressed or it means being, even, being able to open to connection, open to talking with someone about it, um, open to receiving support or feedback. So that's one piece we'll work with is looking at, um, yeah, how we experience what we perceive as an unpleasant or kind of negative sensation or experience and try to just be with it as opposed to react and contract around it or try to suppress it or try to um, get away from it, which is often not possible, especially when it's an unpleasant experience that's happening in our own bodies or minds. Another thing that we will move towards and kind of explore is our reaction to pleasantness or like pleasurable sensation or experience. And by this in the meditation practice, I'll just kind of guide you to experience what it feels like to feel maybe cool when it feels good to feel cool or like warm if it feels good to feel warm. Maybe the support of the surface that you're seated or lying upon. So being more open and receptive to feeling what's good and also noticing if we have this sort of automatic extra reaction of 
kind of clinging to it or wanting it to last or wanting more of it. Um, because we don't often think about how joyful or pleasant experiences can actually uh, can actually hinder our ability to feel joy or pleasantness when we're like clinging, when we're attaching to it. Um, what would it be like to experience pleasant pleasantness or joy a bit more freely in a way that doesn't include the clinging to it or the sort of worry, like, will, will this end or will this person go away? Um, that can be a helpful application of it. And then the third part of this framework, and this, by the way, is all coming from a Buddhist psychology framework of, of mind and well-being. The third part is this huge gradient in between like pleasantness and unpleasantness, which we might think of as neutral sensation or neutral experiences or even neutral people like acquaintances, like people who we might not even know their names and we don't think they impact our lives. So we, our reaction is typically, or the mind's reaction is typically to just kind of gloss over or tune them out because those people or sensations or experiences don't feel directly related to our thriving, like, or our survival. And the thing about neutral stuff and why it is really beneficial to our well being to be able to notice the neutral more is because it expands our awareness of what life and this world has to offer. Oftentimes, the stuff that we're tuning out that feels neutral, I'll use an example of just taking a walk in the woods. Um, you know, it's fall. I know the leaves are changing here, and perhaps they are in the Reading area as well. Just noticing the brilliance and the beauty of transitioning colors, just noticing the sounds of birds, um, noticing the light changing at dusk or dawn or as a thunderstorm or rain rolls through. Noticing the people in our lives, as I mentioned before, who are there nonetheless, but we can default into thinking we're more isolated than we are because we don't really actually notice them, like actually open our hearts to experiencing who they are. It doesn't mean asking everyone in a public place, like, hey, what's your name? What's your background? But just noticing like, wow, these people are around. Wow, the cashier at the register at Carluzzi's or your grocery store of choice um, is like being so supportive in this process and helping me like get my groceries home or whatnot. It's these little things that we tend to tune out um, that then have the effect of making us think we're more isolated than we actually are. So that's my longer talk this morning on meditation. And one final piece before we practice, a really lovely metaphor that a teacher has used to describe how to sort of relate to especially difficult experiences or sensations or emotions, but really anything is to imagine like you're walking alongside them. So it's this experience of being with, um, you're very much with the thing, but you're not enmeshed. You're not like totally merging and thinking the other person, which represents an emotion or experience is, is you. You're just walking alongside or if we don't want to use the metaphor of walking, like just being with, having a tea with this, this, this emotion or experience. So it's this openness to be with and engage without feeling just totally um, enmeshed with it or taken over by it. And this is especially with difficult emotions, but also with like sort of high energy exciting or joyful emotions or like passion and things like this. Um, it can feel much more integrative to sense a being with rather than being taken over or trying to push away, trying to suppress. So with that, we'll go ahead and get ready for the practice. As usual, I encourage you to take a comfortable position for your body and we'll make our way through those three 
um, sort of foundations of a framework for mindful sensitivity, we'll call it. So making any adjustments in your physical body that feel supportive for the practice. Allowing yourself to relax a little bit into the, the surface that's supporting you, whether it's a chair, cushion, floor, couch. Allowing the eyelids to rest closed if that feels good for you. Otherwise, just letting the eyes rest in a soft gaze on some space in front of you. And taking a few deeper breaths here in through the nose, if that's possible, and out through the mouth. Just allowing each inhale to kind of center and refresh your system. And then each exhale, just softening a little bit more deeply into your breathing body, into the present moment. Allowing the jaw, the space between the eyebrows to melt and soften a bit. And as you rest here in your breathing body, aware of its vitality, of the complexity and the intelligence of all of your systems, all systems of your body, mind, and heart working together. I invite you to go ahead and notice, become aware of any sensations or feeling tones of like unpleasantness. So it might be quite obvious if there's some pain or stiffness in a part of your body that was already drawing your attention. And if it's not so obvious, just allowing yourself to open and relax into even something that might feel just a little bit unpleasant. Maybe it's somewhere you wish there were a little more warmth, like a blanket. Maybe there's this like energetic tension. Perhaps you came into this session with some stress that was still kind of percolating in your system. Maybe the residue of an interaction you had earlier in the day or the week that's just kind of left an imprint. We don't need to go into the whole story of it or background, but just noticing in your body anything that feels unpleasant or kind of sticky or tense. Even if it's a sticky thought or a restlessness, this can also feel a bit unpleasant. And we're just noticing it, opening our awareness to that thing, to that experience. And then noticing too, is there some sort of automatic reaction that is wanting to kind of play itself out? So that could be a wanting to push this thing away or wanting that sensation to end. Wishing something were different.
And if you sense any of that, I just welcome you to kind of widen your scope of awareness to include like awareness of reaction, awareness of reactivity. Just holding space for that instead of what your mind might be used to, what your system might be used to, which is just defaulting into it. So we're creating space for whatever unpleasant sensation or feeling tone is there. And creating space for what may be a reaction of, I wish this would end, or I want to push it away or ignore it. It's really just this creating space to be with. Like you're walking alongside the experience or just having tea with it. Maybe you feel in this spaciousness and this little bit of distance from the thing. A little bit of freedom, a little bit of ease. Just being with. And then taking a few moments here to experience the being with the unpleasantness. One last time as we prepare to kind of shift our attention. So maybe it was just a taste of a practice you'll want to explore later, and there will be time in your own time. But for now, just kind of zooming your awareness out again to your whole body, the present moment. Taking a deeper breath if that feels good. And then shifting your awareness, your attention to any sort of pleasantness or feeling tone, sensation, pleasant sensation in your body, in your body mind. This might feel like noticing the support beneath you or behind you, the ease that it offers you in the position you're in. It might be the feeling of warmth of the palms on the tops of the legs or coolness where the air touches the skin where it feels good. It might be subtler than that, like a general sense of ease in the body or ease in the heart or mind. Doesn't have to be something big, just even slightly valenced to the pleasant side of sensation or feeling tone. And I invite you to just be with it, be with the pleasantness. And if this feels challenging in any way, because sometimes it can, and that might be a bit more unexpected with the pleasantness, like, why wouldn't I want to be aware of? pleasantness or feeling good. Sometimes we're just not used to it. Sometimes we feel so sort of conditioned to be aware of what's not going right or what needs fixing that to rest in the feeling of pleasantness is kind of abstract or lesser known. So just give yourself a little grace in that if that's your experience. You're welcome to just be with the pleasantness again as if you're 
just kind of being alongside it or having a tea with it. And then also if you notice any reaction of, oh, I, I wish I could lie here or sit here forever, it feels so good, or I don't want this to end, or what if it goes away? Just noticing any of that, like kind of clinging or attachment and creating space for that as well. Just being with it. What would it be like to be with a pleasant sensation or feeling or experience while also turning the volume down on any sort of fear or worry that it might go away, knowing that that would yeah, likely take courage and a bit of effort, but this is a space to just experiment with that, get curious, what might that be like? Can I feel into it in this moment? And we'll take a few more moments here. So just continuing to be with whatever kind of level of pleasantness you're being with or noticing the reactivity. And then preparing to move to that third and final part, the experience. So zooming your awareness out, maybe taking a deep breath, noticing the whole body once again. And I invite you now finally to just bring into your awareness, notice any of the neutral sensation or feeling tone that typically goes unnoticed. And that might be literal spaces on the body that don't often garner a lot of like felt sensation, like the tops of the feet or the armpits or yeah, a certain span of the back, tops of the legs, shins sides of the torso. And the way to become aware of the neutral is not to push so much as it, as it is to just soften, kind of relax into the experience. I just noticed the feeling of the hair on the back of my neck my hair kind of falling to my shoulders. It's these little things. And if any part of you is kind of having the reaction of, oh, but that doesn't matter, or why are we doing this, or frustration at this part, just noticing that there's that. It's very typical for a mind to want to kind of tune out or gloss over the neutral in an effort to help us know what's worth our time and effort or what we need to avoid. But in this practice space, we have the time, we have the space to just soften into the neutral and notice it. So allowing yourself to be with the neutral, the sensations, the feeling tones, the sense of just being.
taking a few more moments here. And then finally, and to kind of seal our whole practice and bring this together, we'll welcome back into our experience, our awareness, the whole gradient, the whole spectrum of sensation. So any unpleasantness that we started with, any pleasantness that we explored, and then the neutral as well. Just sensing your body as this whole bubble, this whole field of radiant sensation. All different kinds of feeling tone, sensation. And then there's you witnessing, being aware, being with all of it. And like a friend side by side. And just being with the experiences. And then taking a few deep breaths if that feels good. To kind of cleanse and clear out and recenter as we prepare to seal the practice. If it feels good to seal your practice with a gesture like placing hand at heart center or just kind of squeezing the tops of the legs or any way you feel like sealing your practice, you can go ahead and at the sound of the bell, we'll come back to our shared space. So if you want to practice that at home, it's just those three parts, quite simple uh, in, in theory. Um, and you can practice all three or just try one. If one felt more compelling or like that's something that would be useful more in your daily life, then I encourage you to choose that. Um, it could be worked one at a time or all three, yeah. So you can just kind of choose one of those three if you want to work with it, like in the moment, um, or if all three just feels like so much. And I feel like it might even be the most relevant in these times because of, yeah, the epidemic of loneliness, as they say, um, and just noticing, oh, there's more happening than just these these two sort of buckets that I put my experience into like it's pleasant or it's unpleasant and that's it but actually there's so much going on in between um yeah I just read a book it came out a couple of years ago but Maggie maybe you've heard of it or others called how to do nothing resisting the attention economy by Jenny O'Dell um, she she touches on this this concept um this concept of like not not really noticing all of what's happening in our experience and how much it can actually benefit our well-being to be more engaged with and relating with the world around us.